referenced earlier today in the panel, obviously, AEE is, uh, really believes we're on the forefront of policy when it comes to energy innovation and trying to get uh, new and emerging technologies into market and then make sure that they're commercialized and able to uh, provide benefits in terms of jobs and, and consumer benefits. Um, but before, I'll, I'll let her uh, focus on, on what she does on, on Greentown, but uh, just a little bit on her background on uh, uh, on top of everything that she's doing with Greentown is, is also a board member on many different uh, energy uh, innovation opportunities, including uh, one of our state partners, uh, the, the Northeast Clean Energy Council, uh, up there, uh, but is on a, has a number of key energy advisory roles on clean energy and uh, and, and technology, including helping with uh, the Baker uh, administration in Massachusetts and at the federal level uh, with the Department of Commerce, and and all while that has her has her PhD uh, uh, from University of Wisconsin as well. So, uh, with that quick inter introduction, I will turn it over to you, uh, Emily. Thank you very much. Greentown Labs is a community of like-minded engineers and entrepreneurs that are passionate about solving the world's biggest energy and environmental challenges. Greentown Labs started sort of an accident. We basically just needed an inexpensive place to start building some early prototypes. It's a nice big open space, Sam. A place where we could just get everything dirty. We very quickly realized that there was a huge amount of benefit to having this community. We shared tools, CAD advice, engineering problem. We decided to actually start Greentown Labs at that point. The organization then went from four startups to nine in six months to 15 within a year and started to take on a culture of an organization that was all about community. Greentown has exploded beyond anything we had originally uh, imagined. We are the largest clean technology incubator in the United States and are really pioneering how to support clean tech and energy entrepreneurs. Greentown Labs is a place where people are building things in the lab space and really creating innovative things. This is a great showcase for seeing the future of where technology is going. It's a supportive environment, it's a nurturing one. Each company gets to see what companies around it are doing, get ideas from them, be motivated by them. If you look across all of these companies, the fundamental thing that pulls them all together is about solving a big challenge focused on resource efficiency and or reducing waste into the environment. That's what makes this community very like-minded and strong. If we don't take on these passions that we have and if we don't confront these problems, then who's gonna do it? All right, so good afternoon, everyone. I think we're, oh, the slides are up, excellent. So I'm Emily Reichert, uh, CEO of Greentown Labs, and my presentation is gonna be a little bit different than most of the ones you've already seen today. So um, we're gonna look at slides. I'm gonna go through them relatively quickly because I have 15 minutes. Um, but what I'd like to do is introduce you to what a clean technology incubator is all about and the innovation that comes from these incubators and why that's important to our clean energy transition. So Greentown Labs, as you just saw in the video, uh, is an organization that supports entrepreneurs who are solving the world's biggest energy and environmental challenges. And we particularly focus on a specific type of company, and that is companies that are building physical products. So unlike many incubators or accelerator programs that you may have heard of, um, you know, who are doing software, which you can do in a coffee shop. Um, an incubator for hardware companies has physical lab space that you really need when you're building a clean energy product. So as you heard, uh, we were founded by a set of entrepreneurs who were graduating from MIT and were graduating out of their laboratories and they needed a place to continue to build their clean tech companies. And so they started out in a basement in South Boston. I helped them move about a year and a half into the organization to Somerville, Massachusetts, which is kind of the old industrial core of Boston. Lots of empty industrial buildings. We took over one, we're about to take over another one. Along the way, we became the nation's largest clean tech incubator, hosting 55 companies currently. And when we grow and open our global center for clean tech innovation in about two months from now, 
we will be able to accommodate about 100 startups in 100,000 square feet of office, lab, wet lab, and prototyping space. So who are the companies that we support? You're not going to see too many household names on there yet, but give us about five years. You will see, though, in the bottom, there's a few corporate members who have desk and lab space at Greentown Labs. And that's because there are many large corporations in the energy space, in the building space, in the efficiency space, who are all looking for innovation. And they're finding that innovation at incubators like Greentown Labs. And so they actually share desk space and office space with the entrepreneurs as they're working there every day on their prototypes. So clean technology to us, when you hear clean tech, you may think, ah, you know, renewable energy, solar, wind. Clean technology to us is a lot broader than that. It's basically doing more with less. And so the sectors that we support range from companies that are doing innovation in agriculture with water and waste, building efficiency, chemicals and materials, to your energy distribution and generation, transportation, even robotics, because there's a lot of robotics technologies that today are reducing the impact on the environment of manufacturing and making manufacturing processes more efficient. So it's really a wide range of technologies that our companies typically span. So we think of ourselves as part of an ecosystem. And an ecosystem is basically an environment where the startup entrepreneurs are that is a place where they can be supported and with like-minded startups and organizations that provide them support and help them grow. So in the Boston area, our ecosystem looks like this in terms of the stage of company that we would typically support. So most of the companies that are at Greentown Labs currently graduate from a university. They will typically at some point do some kind of contest or competition. In our area, in Boston, there are competitions like the MIT Clean Energy Prize, the MIT 100K Prize, the BU Venture Prize. And so what that does is takes an idea to a business plan. Next, they will typically go from a business plan to an accelerator program. And you may have heard of Y Combinator or Techstars or the Mass Challenge. All of those are programs that are like really intense three-month boot camps. And that model is great for software. But if you're building hardware, if you're building a physical product that needs to be manufactured, after three months, you're just getting started. And so your next stop is an incubator. And that's what Greentown Labs does. And so what we're working on with companies is helping them go from a prototype that is maybe the first one they've ever made in a lab to making iterations of that prototype better and better to finding a way to test that prototype in a real world environment. Say if it's a grid related product, helping hook them up with a utility so they can test that. If it's a building materials product, you might need to find a test facility where you can install insulation, for example, and test that in a real world environment. And so what they're doing while they're with us, and this stage takes about two years, is they are prototyping, doing what we call pilot testing, and then also finding their first customer, which may be a utility and may be a major uh, corporate player, and it's likely to be some you know, significant size company that is difficult for a startup to work with. And so that's where we come in. And I should say that after they finish the incubator, or typically, once they've finished um, getting that real-world data, that allows them to be able to raise a Series A round of investment between five and $15 million, and that's what gets them out of the incubator. And that process takes about two years. So these are a few shots you also saw in the video of our incubator. Um, prototyping lab is really the heart of it. That's what companies need most. And we rent spaces as small as 100 square feet. So that's like a closet. but it's big enough for you to be able to test your prototype. And then we rent all the way up to 3,000 square feet and typically companies grow out of that. Um, we have co-working space where they do their modeling and design and then they can go in the lab and then come back out and all of that allows them to do very rapid prototyping. Um, we also have an event space. We throw around 350 events a year, so on average once a day. Um, and all of these events are aimed at helping our entrepreneurs either learn something, we do lunch and learns, uh, connect to one another, or bring the industry professionals in the area in to help our entrepreneurs build their networks. 
So by being at a place like Greentown Labs, you get a lot of different benefits. And these add up to, for our companies, about $130,000 worth of value. Because they need design and testing software to be able to build their hardware product. So most everything nowadays, you don't just automatically go make it in a lab. You have to design it first in a CAD software program. And that software can run up to $100,000. So if you're a startup working with us, you don't pay that. You instead pay your people, you pay for your prototype, and we get you the deals on software, et cetera, that most startups need. Um, we also have a lot of different shared resources, such as a machine shop. We have a network of manufacturers that we work with that are local to our area, about 300 manufacturers all across Massachusetts that we connect our startup companies to. And in addition, um, an investor network that allows our companies to get in with investors early on, start having those conversations, and we work with about 100 different investors in our area. I talked earlier about ecosystem. So I was talking about the startups on, in that perspective, but really the groups that are around clean tech startups, which are the center of our world at Greentown Labs, are the ones that help us to help these startups move forward. So you don't really get very far if you're a startup doing a clean tech prototype in your garage. What you really need is all of these other resources around you. And a Greentown Labs, as an incubator, tries to bring all these things to you so that you don't have to go out and find them on your own. They're just there, and then you can spend time focusing on your company. So we bring together corporate partners, universities who provide talent, professional services like legal and accounting and HR and PR, all the government resources that startups could need, grant programs, et cetera. Um, we work with all the other startup support organizations and then a pool of investors. And one of our roles is really to convene all of these folks together so that our startups can have access to them. It's a little hard to see here, but this is a map of the United States and um, Asia on one end and uh, Europe on the other. So we are part of a national network of clean technology, um, incubators and accelerators. These are all folks, all these organizations on this chart are supporting clean tech entrepreneurs just like we are. They have different models. Some are demonstration facilities, some are accelerators, some are incubators. But we meet as a group, the leaders of these organizations, twice a year in person and also almost sometimes daily, sometimes monthly on phone calls because there's not too many people in the world that are running a clean tech incubator, and so it's really nice to have a network to share best practices with. The value here, though, to our entrepreneurs is if you are in Massachusetts and you're interested in getting access to a program in California or in Washington State or in Oregon, now you have a way to go and land in another incubator and have access to the resources and the network there. If you're a California startup and you wanted to raise money in Boston, you can come out and stay in our incubator and we'll connect you to the resources there. So it's a network of landing pads for entrepreneurs all across the country. I wanna credit the Department of Energy with originally coming up with the idea of this network and funding it uh, for three years. Now it's run by EPRI, um, the Electric Power Research uh, Institute, and they have continued to convene us and be a great platform for making sure that these organizations continue to work together. So what's the value in having all of these startups in one place at one time? Well, we've seen a lot of success in the startups that we support um, actually getting out there, raising money, and even exiting. And so these are just some of our Series A and Series B awards. Doesn't include government contracts, so we've had quite a number of defense contracts um, that are also of that magnitude. We've had a couple recent exits just in this year. The last one, L3 uh, Open Water Power, one of our startups was bought by L3 Technologies, which is a defense contractor for $70 million. Um, we've so far had our companies raise roughly around $260 million, and they've created about 900 jobs. We say our success rate is 88%, and the reason we can say that is that companies who have gone through Greentown Labs have a 88% percent chance of continuing to grow their businesses after they leave the incubator. So they are alive and growing um, once they leave the incubator. So that is very important to us because that's our point. We're doing economic development. We're helping clean tech get into the world and we want 
thriving, growing companies. We want them to be independent of us. I'll just uh, finish up here by sharing a little bit about our future plans. Future as in two months from now, we are opening another location, um, actually that is steps away from our current one, but if you know Somerville, Massachusetts, you'll know there's a lot of, not quite empty, but underutilized uh, real estate that's from old industrial buildings. This is a 1910 foundry building that we've repurposed to be another part of our incubator. And uh, this center, is really a, a place where we're gonna have laboratories, offices, wet lab, and all the things that startups need as an extension of our original space. And that'll bring us to about 100,000 square foot total and the ability to accommodate 100 startups. We're calling it the Global Clean Tech in, uh, Global Center for Clean Tech Innovation because like earlier panelists have suggested, there are markets all around the world that are interested in this technology, and we have corporate partners that are coming to us from all around the world that are interested in this technology. In fact, as we've gotten ready to open our new center, 25% of our applications are coming from outside of the country. So there's a lot of interest uh, from abroad in working in clean tech in the U.S. market and outside of the U.S. market. So it's very important for us to be a conduit for that type of sharing of innovation and technology. I'll just take a moment and mention our sponsors. So you'll see many familiar uh, logos up there. We have 38 corporate sponsors. Some of them provide things like legal services to our startups, others provide software. But uh, the most important folks are in that these top three rows here and they provide really the direct financial support that allows us to charge um, a rent that is under market for our area. And so these are very important supporters. They provide access to our, for our startups to mentoring support. Um, they do investments, they do pilots, they do all kinds of different things that the startups are gonna need because it's most likely that these startups are going to need to work with a large corporation to get their product to market because that's the industry they're in. And finally, I'll just highlight um, our advisory board, a lot of different corporate partners on there, uh, folks like GE, um, Shell, United Technologies, Veolia, all of these are supporters and sponsors of Greentown Labs and great partners for us as we grow. And finally, uh, our team, uh, we are around 20 strong, or getting close to 20, up from when I took over about five years ago it was me and one intern uh, beginning to grow the business. So it's been a great growth trajectory, but it's also our members growing and prospering and more and more clean tech companies coming to us and wanting to be part of our community. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to take questions, but uh, I'd be happy to do so. Otherwise, um, thank you so much for listening. Can I take questions? Okay, I guess I'm going to. Hi. Is there a minimum size city where this would work? I know it's like uh, Portland, Oregon is probably the smallest one on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Vermont, it's a pretty good sized city. It has a lot of the components of that, but I don't know. So I was just at a conference in Burlington, Vermont, a national clean energy uh, conference, and being involved in advising on how Vermont uh, Burlington could uh, set up something similar, and you definitely do have some plans in the works there. Good. Thank you. Yes. Excuse me, I had a quick question. I had a quick question for you regarding uh, the private sector, private equity, because mm -hmm. private equity, as a general rule, doesn't invest in technology. Mm -hmm. And as Bill Gates says, uh, venture capital money is really dumb money. So I don't know what success you're having with the private sector in investing in new technologies. And if so, what kind of IP is given up for your startup companies? Uh, so we've had quite a bit of private funding. So I, I showed a number of $260 million that our companies have raised. 80% of that is from the private sector. So our companies do often have government grants at the very early stages, but then they, they, they it's not enough to really sustain the company, so they have to grow. Uh, there's a variety of different sources of capital that our companies use uh, beyond government grants. So there's venture capital, there's angel investment, there's seed investment. Um, there are uh, you know, 
there are uh, corporate partners who come in and pay for aspects of the development. So there's really a lot of different paths. I'd say as entrepreneurs, these folks are pretty scrappy. So they will travel across the country to go find money and they will bring it back you know, to continue to build their company. So it, even though venture capital in this area is basically nil at this point, um, it doesn't seem to stop them. If there's no other questions, I'll say thanks again for listening. And um, I am sitting right there. So if anyone would like to have more information about Greentown, um, we're very happy to share. And thank you so much for letting me speak to you today.